Hey everybody, uh, we're back. Finally, it's been forever. Uh, I don't think I did a Galaxy Brain for all of like set four, but now we're in set 4.5. We're in 11.4. Seemed like a good time to bring the show back. Um, and I have a great guest on with me this week to uh, to do exactly that. Robin Songs, recent uh, tournament not uh, achiever, not over, not overachiever, like <laughs> good achiever, like like A A minus levels mm -hmm. in in tournament yep. results, but really good though. But how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, though. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, qualifiers are this weekend, so I was just prepping for that. Yeah. yeah. And it's a good patch, too, to do it, right? I mean, this is... It yes. seems like things are finally back to a point where... I mean, I, I don't mind reroll comps, but having, like, so many one-cost rerolls is kind of, like, soul-crushing. So it's nice to get back to kind of, like, a best board sort of style of play. Yeah. Um, Riot is weird. Like, they always... <laughs> uh, they have like bad patches, but they always seem to fix it right before like worlds or like towards the times that it really matters. So mm -hmm. yeah, the, the patch is really, really good. Um, just, you just realize how bad last patch was after playing this patch. But I'm glad, uh, I'm glad that they fixed it. It is kind of night and day difference. I hate to like harp on bad patches, but like it's, it is much, much better now. But yes. we got to go through a little bit of introduction, like because some people uh, out there may not be as familiar with you or your esports background. So let's go through that really quick. How did you get into competitive gaming, not just TFT, but competitive gaming in general and kind of what led you from there to where you are now? Okay, so um, I always been a gamer. Uh, my dad, my dad was a gamer. I, I think I started oh, cool. playing games when I was like two or three years old playing tetris on the super nintendo okay um back then i still lived in taiwan so we just played tetris with our family like competing um it was me my brother and my dad and my mom just competing tetris moved on to like super mario bros stuff like that nice and then i i remember my first like i got the ps2 and i got final fantasy 10 that was probably like my first like own game purchase Mm -hmm. um and to this day it's still my favorite video game of all time final fantasy 10 it like brought me into the world of like what video games can make you like feel wait it's i have to stop like you the... for a second there hold on yeah. right because yeah. it was a great story i agree mm -hmm. but in terms of percentage what percentage of final fantasy 10 was you playing the actual game and what percentage was blitzball oh know. <laughs> probably like more blitzball than i thought because like yeah, usually that's how the story <laughs> Usually the mini games and games are not that fun, but Blitzball is really fun. Yeah. So, yeah. So I actually spent a lot of time in Blitzball. It was really, really fun. Yeah. All right. I had to check. Please, please continue. Yeah. That that <laughs> that's pretty standard with the Final Fantasy X experience. I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I love Final Fantasy X. And then, um, so started playing, started getting a lot of like PlayStation games. Um, and then I started playing League. I remember I started playing League League of Legends. Right after TPA won the World Championships, which was season two. Oh sure, yeah. Um, after that, I was because I'm Taiwanese, so I was like, "Oh, this is cool." Like, I don't even know how we won, but we won. And then, um, it was a really good so, team. Yeah, no, like it's like uh, so there were underdogs, right? No one, no one really counted on them to win or whatever. And but later on, they yeah. just beat like they beat the Moscow Five, and then they beat like a lot of people. They're like, and then yeah, CJ. Uh, well, I guess they were they were Mig Frost at the time, but uh, in the finals. And yeah, that was the first worlds I watched, so I remember that one pretty vividly as well. Yeah, yeah, same here, same here. So, um, I think a lot of people started playing League after that, and I started playing League. Um, I was never like a competitive League player, but I think it's because I was, um, I mean, everyone was everyone was in school, but I was in school, I wasn't playing it that too much, but I peaked at like you know, Diamond One, so still like pretty good, but not like you know, competitive level. And then so, and I started playing TFT, uh, because my friends introduced me to it, and then I don't know why, like. People, my friends, my friends from like school asked me like, "Why are you so good at this game?" I don't even, I don't, I don't know why, because I've never played any other game competitively. Never really played strategy games. I played Hearthstone for a little bit and got Legend, but okay. Um, I think that's about it. And then yeah, so TFT watched a lot of YouTube videos, watched a lot of streams, and got pretty good. And then I've been, I've been challenger ever since uh, set one, but I've just been recently like putting my name on the map, I guess. Yeah, I mean you've yeah. you've been around like I a lot of people who have followed TFT like are familiar with your name. You you've been high on the ladder in the past. You've uh, you've been a player that a lot of other pro players have regarded well, but it really seems would you would you agree that that set 4 is where you feel like you've kind of hit your stride as far as uh, you know kind of making that leap into like the the higher tiers of professional play? 
Yeah, so I've always been challenger. I was challenger since set one. Right. So people knew me as a good player, but not like the top of the top with like Soju and like Milk, GBA, Socks and them. Hmm. Um, set two, I kind of didn't play as much. Um, so I was still challenger, but I wasn't like, like rank one, I think I was like, oh, set one, I think I was like rank like 15. It's okay. pretty good. Yeah, that's really and then up there. set set two. I was like a hundred something, so I didn't play that much. Hmm. And then set three is when I I think set three was when I when people noticed who I was because I hit rank one. Um, but then set four is when I really popped off because I was like consistent top ten, hmm. um, winning some tournaments, and also is when I started streaming. My, my my streaming started popping off, so that's when I became like more like popular player. Right. And um, yeah, I am excited for future sets as well cool yeah yeah i i'm hyped too we got that little bit of a set five like a teaser a while ago but we'll i can't wait for uh, more details to come out with that but yeah. let's actually get into some of these games so you've selected two games for us to uh review today one of them is from the current patch and one of them is actually from the uh, c9 qualifiers a few weeks ago but this show is really uh like we talked about before this show is really about the fundamentals of team fight tactics and really getting into a pro player's brain and their mentality turn to turn more than it is about just being on the most recent you know part of the game basically so yeah. uh, i'm ready to get in the first game if you are yeah um we i think we should do the uh this the c9 one first and then the current patch one. okay so we can talk about the Current patch. Last patch and current patch. Yeah, sounds good. We can definitely do that. Uh, all right, well, let's get into the first game. This is from the C9 Fates NA qualifier, and this was actually back on patch 11.3. And so uh, this is a patch, obviously, that a lot of people uh, had a lot of gripes about. Um, the one cost chosens were very strong and all that. But as a, a pro player, Robin Songs, a true pro player, you don't really get the luxury of choosing what patch you're going to you know play or not play right you kind of just have to excel at uh you have to find a way to try to excel at all of them right yeah 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 so like if there's um like you know you can complain but you have to get good at the patch you have to remain a good standing to get your snapshot points mm. and if the worlds was on this patch i mean you have just have to play it right so yeah Exactly. So going into this tournament, of course, it is on 11.3. What was your kind of like general approach? It looks like you uh, grabbed a, I was trying to see what glove. item you grabbed on a glove. Okay, on the carousel. But what's your, your general approach for that patch? Um, so this patch is really, really easy to play, in my opinion. I even came out with the 11.3 guide, and that's generally on YouTube, and that's generally how I mm -hmm. played the patch. Okay. It was like, there's a lot of Chosens you can get in the beginning where you keep the whole game. You can, you can just like... Uh, it make the game will become really easy. So if right. you get any reroll, any of the reroll champs like Nidalee, um, Wukong, Diana, stuff like that, you can keep it the whole game. Um, there's also certain other chosen you can keep the whole game. Like if you get a brawler chosen, you can just keep the whole game and play Shivana. Mm -hmm. Um If you get like an Elderwood chosen, you can keep the whole game probably to play uh, Elderwood Asol, stuff like that. So that was my game plan. You know, maybe e even though keeping the early game chosen might not be the best play, it's really good play to to get top four because. Um, you know, you don't cap as hard, but you just don't get dizzy, you know? Right, So, exactly. I think that was my game plan. Picked up this uh, Coldest CF, and uh, part of my guide as well, if you, if, you, if I pick up Coldest CF, I'm going to be playing Elderwood Aesol. Uh, the reason is the reason is because if you if you pick up Coldest CF, you're probably going to be playing Coldest Keeper Mages mm -hmm. early game. And Keeper Mages is an easy transition into Elderwood Aesol. That makes uh, sense. So, at this point in the yeah. game, you've, you've already decided what you're going to play. Like, I've already just, like, kind of, I'm leaning towards Elderwood Aesol. Obviously, it's, a lot of things can happen yeah. where I don't play it. But, yeah, it's it's generally what I'm going to play. I think here, I, I, I was deciding if I should lock for the Elise for Cultist. Right. That's what um, I was kind of wondering if you were going to do. You didn't do it. Uh, I ended up, anyway. I didn't yeah. do it, but I got rewarded. Because the only <laughs> other shop that's better than Elise is Elise plus a mage, which I got here. Yeah. Elise and Brand. So... I actually got rewarded, but I, I actually think um, the right play is to lock because I think the, ask, chances of, yeah. the chances of you getting a better shop is lower than the least, in my opinion, I think. Right, because um, I mean, we've all had those games where it's like, oh, it just feels too weird to lock at like 1-3 and, and so you let it go, yeah. but then you don't get the Elise and then you sit on it and... and uh, but that's, that's pretty good. It's weird, yeah. There. Yeah, exactly. You, but You just have like no cultists, so it's weird. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, pretty good start uh, though overall. When you look at these items, you're thinking, you know, jewel gauntlet from the glove. But what what are you thinking about with the the other two components here? Uh, you 100% slam sunfire cave here because okay. first of all, I have cultist chosen and I have a pretty strong board. 
I, I you always pre level with cultist chosen so you can get higher level cultists and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, also to get these keepers, and I ended up getting a three a cannon three cost keeper, which is really really high roll in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. And um, you always send sunfire because you're trying to streak. Right. So it's always Sunfire plus the glove. The glove is very flexible. It's either Hodge or Jewel Gauntlet. So you just put it on TF because it's going to be on TF no matter what. Mm -hmm. And then Sunfire Cape, um, you know, usually it's on like Pike or something, but the best person to put it on is Kennen here. So I put mm -hmm. it on Kennen. I don't have a mage yet, so I put in a, I just put an extra TF for the extra cultist stack. It seems like uh, generally the uh, the idea with Sunfire Cape in the early game, and correct me if I'm wrong, is just put it on whoever you think is going to live the longest just to get the most applications of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever's going to live the longest or whoever can spread it better, like Jarvan and like Pike. Do you think Sunfire um, Cape still uh, has the same... I, I feel like item-wise, not a lot has changed in terms of what is strong early, what you want to slam early between 11.3 and 11.4. What, what do you think? Uh, Sunfire Cape did get nerfed, but you, it's bit, still yeah. a really strong early game item. So, And it, it's basically, it uses a giant spell and chain really well. Mm -hmm. So you always slam it if you have it, in my opinion, stage 2. Um, there's nothing to, like, greet it for, you know? Like, you're right. going to greet a Giant Ball for, like, Zeke. You're going to greet a Chain Vest for, like, Locket. You know, yeah. it's like, you might as well greet for the a bow or, 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 or a sword, you know, an offensive item. Yeah, exactly. So you just found the Sunfire. Yeah. So I want to talk about your positioning a little bit here. Uh, you know, some pros will just swap sides every turn. Uh, it feels like with the, the mage setup, especially with the TF and just the angle that he uses his ability at, it's generally better to line things up like you did on the left side. Do you, is that something that you find when you play this sort of opening where you want to just trend towards the left side of the board rather than swap every, every side? Because I feel so much worse when I've got my mages on the right side of the board early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like, I really like TF in this little pocket. Um, yeah. I wonder if I put it, uh, I like it, like the left pocket seems like a better angle. But to be honest, you should be scouting to see which side is better. Um, you want mm. TF to be on the opposite side of the team to get better cards. Right. Because if, if TF is on the, on left side, if I'm on left side and I fight someone on the left side, the TF cards can be really awkward. Um, True. But I, I don't even, but it doesn't matter too much, honestly. You, right now, you're, you just want to dodge the assassins, but with Keeper, you should be okay. Um, yeah. I think my main priority right now is that I want to look for mages, because TF with mages is, is really good, because he can whiff his cards a lot, you know? Right. And I have a, I have a brand pair, so I'm looking for, like, Lulu, Vagar. Um, I'm also looking for six cultists, mm -hmm. possibly. If you have a cultist chosen, you always look for six cultists. It's way easier to get now, because there's, like, there's two, three costs now, Callista and Sivir. Right. Um, so it's easier to get six cultists. Keep pushing, like... I'm I'm pre leveling here instead of making ten because I want to keep pushing, getting get better shops to push my streak because I'm a really this is a really strong board so yeah this is an ultra strong start for sure uh, I wanted to ask about the the strength of of cultists throughout the game compared with uh 11.3 11 11.4 because 11.3 I felt like six cultists was a great way to get through the mid game and maintain a lot of HP but you had to really ditch it once you got to like stage four or so otherwise it would start to fall off really hard um do you feel like cultist is strong enough now and maybe even like the nine cultist sort of stretch goal uh in 11.4 to stick with it longer than you could in 11.3 uh, or do you think it's about the same where it's kind of like an early mid game you know hp maintaining style that you still want to swap out late game what do you think i think it's about the same okay. you're never going to play a, a cultist board late game um unless you hit like a cultist like you're never i'm never gonna keep this tf the whole game yeah you only play six cultists maybe if you hit like a cultist Sivir or cultist Callista or something like that or cultist aatrox mm -hmm. but usually you, you want to uh pivot out um you yeah. never play nine cultists and the re i i talk about this with chat a lot like you never play nine cultists because you it requires you to hit zillion and that's the main point right like, you're you're not you're not gonna like you you only play nine cultists if you just happen to hit zillion when you also happen to hit a cultist shielded on your rolldown, and you just happen to hit all cultists already, so yeah, that's when you play. Mm -hmm. But I want, I want to talk about a little bit here. Like, I ended up getting a three cost tier to make Hodge. That's super high roll as well. I don't, I, no one took it. Um, so I made Hodge mm -hmm. with, and it was a three, it was three gold, and I got a mage, and I yeah. transferred the Sunfire Cape to Rakan, which is a better holder for Sunfire Cape than Kennen. And I'm probably gonna be keeping if I'm playing Elder Wind Aso, I'm probably gonna be keeping this Rakan the whole game. So it's like a really, really good pickup here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's much better at delivering some of those Sunfire applications to the back line, staying alive while he's doing it. And like you said, if you're going to run Asol, you're going to be running some Elderwood. So yeah, he's going to be sticking around anyway. 
Uh, so at this point, oh, you find Lulu in the shop, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, and how often would you? I would say what's what's rated higher right now? The the cultist probably stays in over something like five mage. That's kind of a dumb question now that I've actually like said it, but but yeah. <laughs> um. So five mage is 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 pretty good actually, but yeah. Um, you probably only play it if you have like any two. I was gonna say maybe um, I'm undervaluing it, but you really do need the any for the front line. Yeah, yeah, five mage is good, but you never take out cultist just because it's cultist chosen, so it gives you like extra stacks, right? And it's mm -hmm. at least two. So uh, yeah, my hitting the at least is also really high roll in my opinion. Hitting the at least two, um, is actually perfect for my board to like buff up my Galio like a lot. Yeah, I should be five streaking this game because my board is like really strong. Right. Oh wow. Oh wait, wait, wait. That Jarvan yeah, I got, though. <laughs> I got I got Katarina. Yeah. Well, the Jarvan too. I think that uh, I think that messed up the TF cast if I recall. Oh, yeah. So I think I end up losing this, which is super. Un oh, wait, 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 wait. No, I think I'm Galio. Wait. Oh my God. Yeah. No. This is so cast, yeah. unfortunate. Actually, I think I'll, I think um so uh, so that right that mm -hmm. was a position if. Hmm. Okay. Uh, actually, it's hard though because I was thinking like I needed to scout for the Katarina and then go on the opposite side, but I only have one clump, so Katarina's still gonna come to me, I guess. I think yeah. I could have positioned better, though. Okay, I mean hindsight's always a twenty twenty, I suppose. But uh, yeah. when you and when you're scouting at that point in such an early part of the game too, you still have a lot of room for error, where you can make some educated guesses about who you're gonna face. But there's still a, yeah. a lot of different options at that point. So if there's only that yeah. one Katarina, but you'd be better against everybody else's board in the position you were in, it's tough to make that call, you know. Yeah, I, I think so. I get six cultists here, and I think at this point I got a spatula. I think it's already a top four from this point. Mm. Um, if you get a, if you get a spatula for Elderwood for Asol, right, it's super strong. Um, plus, I had a good stage two. So the thing about this comp is that you're gonna roll at level seven, so you're gonna have a good. If you have a good stage two, you're also going to have a good stage three because you're gonna be rolling pretty hard at seven mm. for Elderwood uh, mages, and then you have the Elderwood spat to help you uh, not get capped. Yeah. So then that means you're just strong at every stage of the game, which means you're probably guaranteed a top four. So this is one of those situations too, where like we we know in eleven point three a three two roll down was pretty common, but you get to kind of skip that with this board, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So with with with, with when I'm playing Elderwood Asol, I actually roll at three two sometimes. Um, oh really? Okay. It's only only if you have a bad stage two. So if you had a bad stage two, you need to roll down at three level six three two mm -hmm. to kind of stabilize your board. Um, but this game I don't need to roll down at three two. I I, I even just level to six at three one to put in six cultists two keepers yeah which is extremely strong i stay above 20 gold um i think my rule of thumb is if i can stay above 20 gold and i can level up to put it to make my board really strong i always do it interesting because that's that's always one of the i think one of the hardest things about learning tft is knowing when you have these opportunities to you know level up at a, at a at a stage that you wouldn't normally do that like three one rather than three two um, you have to be really aware, I think, of like the strength of the lobby relative to your own board strength and sort of your own economy, like you were saying. Uh, how often do you find yourself making those slightly unorthodox moves, right, where you level up on a, a turn you may not normally level up, that kind of thing? Uh, I actually do that quite a lot. I think people need to get out of their um, get out of the habit of leveling on on certain leveling intervals, like mm -hmm. three two level six, four, four one level seven. You know, only rolling at three two level six, only rolling at four one. Right. You need to get in the habit of like, okay, is is like, is the EV worth? Expect like, is the return worth? If I level up here, um, how strong, how much stronger am I getting, and how much gold am I sacrificing for it? Right. You need to like kind of get in the habit of thinking like that instead of like, oh, three two level six, and then four one level seven. You have like, you can go three three, you can go level seven, three four, three five, whatever. As long as the gold that you're paying, you think is worth. In, in in this in this case, like I don't lose that much gold, and I get six cultists. Um, I love at uh, six cultists, two keeper, right? Which is yeah. really strong at three one. And some people may say like, oh, you didn't even need to level, you would have won anyways, right? <laughs> but then because I leveled, I won harder. I won with more units, so I put more pressure in the lobby. Like I deal the extra like three or four damage to that person. Mm -hmm. Maybe he might get he might die three, with three or four HP. You well, know, at the same HP. time. You yeah. also give yourself that higher chance of hitting a higher cost, you know, unit that might give you, yeah, you know, yeah. just that more too. So it's kind of that oh. passive benefit as well. Better shops for one turn, right? Um, and just like putting more pressure in the lobby, like 
this game is a lot of psychological, right? Right. So if you like, if you, so let's say you didn't level and you like, you 2 owe them, but if you level, you like 5 owe them, it, it hurts them psychologically too. Like mm. they, they get tilted sometimes, you know, like, oh, this guy's level 6 already, why? And like, they, and then they start <laughs> making misplays and stuff. So right. there's a lot of like, there's a lot of small things I think in this game that people don't um, think about. That was kind of a crazy last round. They had the Nasus 3 already. They already found an early Morgana. So that was just an extremely strong yeah. uh, Siphoner board. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there was, there was, there was, I mean, that was, that's, this is a problem last patch, right? You, you get exactly. uh, Nasus Chosen. Nasus Chosen is so, was so strong. It's probably like a free top four. I don't, I don't, I don't remember who I fought with that, but it was really strong, yeah. Well, this this point in the game is is a, was a real pain, uh, pain point for a lot of people in 11.3 because you would be playing best board, you know, you're doing well, and then then the three cost one, uh, the the three star one cost would start to show up, you know, and then that creates these wild power swings in the lobby that didn't exist like one round ago, and it's yeah. it's difficult to keep track of, and it's certainly difficult to keep up with if you're playing this more you know standard style play, isn't it? Yeah, and it's also like because of the, about the power level difference. It's also a lot of it made matchmaking RNG even more like prevalent mm -hmm. because like I would have streaked infinitely if I didn't face this guy, True. but whoever faces this three star Nasus just gets their streak broken no matter what. So it's like it's also a, another like RNG into the game. Yeah, it, it, and um, I think I don't know. If you, I don't know if you saw that, but I I ended up I went for the cloak right mm -hmm. for a special for Elderwood Spat. But I ended up losing it to socks by like one millimeter, oh. so I think I was like, yeah, I, didn't I was see like, that actually, pretty, I just assumed I you pretty, got it. <laughs> yeah, we both went for cloak, and he got it by like one millimeter, and I was like kind of bummed hmm. because if you have this spatula up and you don't get a cloak by stage four, um, it's kind of awkward. Like you right. don't have, you don't have the elderwood. Uh, the thing about elderwood is that if you don't have an elderwood chosen, you need to hit Zaya for six elderwood, and hitting Zaya at level seven is not that reliable. Yeah, definitely not guaranteed. Yeah, so having the Elderwood spat means you don't have to hit Zaya for six Elderwood, which is really, really good. Um, okay. Yeah, I think, look at these items. I don't slam Giant Slayer, because in this comp, you want to save the sword for Gunblade, for, for Aesol. Right. And you don't slam Giant Slayer unless it's like a late game item, because even if I slam it right now, it's not going to change much fights. Uh, the tier, the tier is probably like Hodge or Ice Cream Cone. This is a, a stressful part of the game, right? Because you're in a situation where it's like you've got half of all of the items you want, but you yeah. don't. But you, you're just wondering if you're going to hit those other halves. Yeah. So this, like, this is very, very uh, dependent on my stage. Uh, the wolf, the drops from wolves. Right. Uh, if I get good drops, probably a top four. If I get really bad drops, probably have to fight for like a fifth mm -hmm. or something. But um, let's see it's another yeah, Katarina six, board if you have six cultists um wow yeah it's so weird six <laughs> cultists and i end up three streaking but it's actually better for me because i get more gold by streaking into neutrals yeah at, at this point you kind of want to lose that particular round because right now you get to go into the neutrals and carry that loss streak through with an extra round and not lose hp Helps yeah i'm lot. actually really rich this game as well I, I ended up selling all the cultists putting in elderwood units getting mm -hmm. ready for the pivot um like i have the loaded dice um insurance mm -hmm. so it also allows me to hit a lot of units if i use a loaded dice like loaded dice kind of makes it like oh you'll probably hit your board um yeah all the way so you always use it on like lulu vegar so you have the chance of getting lulu vegar i got another spatula yeah wow but a, vegar the, just thing about, the, uh, orbs the too. funny thing about this comp is that you actually don't slam um actually do i slam fawn i don't i don't know but the thing is, <laughs> Fawn is not actually not the best in this comp. You'd rather have Elderwood Spat and like, or like two Elderwood Spats or like a Mage, mage Spat. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's, that's a lot of Vagars. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I remembered the game. I, I knew which game we were doing, but I forgot how exactly you got into the Vagar arc. But that, there it is. So so tell me what the thought process is in right now. So RFC, okay, yeah, you're not going to use the bows for a whole lot else. Here, items but... are weird. Like, I don't know what items to do. Um, okay, so it was, it was Mage. Interesting. Oh, okay. Because you've got three so, tiers. You didn't hit a single rod, which is what you were really looking for, I feel like. Yeah. So three tiers means, he, and I'm playing Vagar carry, right? Yeah. So for, it's for sure blue buff. And right. then I have the option of slamming Fawn here, right? Mm -hmm. Um, For the immediate spike. But I, I, I played it way more greedy. I went for Mage Cap, and then the other the other spat, I wanted to get uh, Elderwood spat. Or or another Mage Cap. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be um, fair, Mage Rakan is insane, so... 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Major Con plus R. I had the I had the RFC. I had two bows. If you have two bows in this comp, bow is really hard to get rid of in this comp. Yeah. Um, the only good bow item is probably Giant Slayer or like Winsu's. Uh, mm -hmm. but if you have two bows, it's even harder to get rid of. So you, if you have two bows, you most likely will slam the RFC and just put it on Rakan. Um, it's it's it, it used to be really OP, but now it's like, oh yeah, I loaded dice of Vagar and get like, I get double Ace on Zaya. Th this is like also like really really high roll yeah that's insane yeah but that this is the problem with loaded dice i think um competitively if someone hits a really good loaded dice shop it it spikes them up so much harder imagine if i use a loaded dice here and i get like um i get uh like bunch of mouth highs or something you are like you know? five vegars or something crazy like that you know because right now yeah, you're yeah, yeah. already you you're one vegar away from a vegar three already at four two yeah i'm one vegar off i don't know i don't think um i roll for it I think I just push levels. Yeah, I mean, your gold is kind of low at this point. And you figure at this point with the 30% chance, you're probably going to natural one at some point anyway. Yeah, I don't need the Vagar 3 spike immediately. Right. And also, if I have, I, I actually high rolled the Elderwood, Cho Elderwood Chosen instead of May Chosen for mm -hmm. Vagar. Because if I if you have Elderwood Chosen and you get um, uh, Elderwood Spat, you can get 9 Elderwood, which is really, really strong. Yeah. Um, well, this and is it, also but, kind of the, the dream right now where you're running six Elderwood and five Mage, which is really, really strong together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, if, you, if you're going for nine Elderwood, you need to push level eight to fit everything in. Mm -hmm. um, like, some people play Mage Reroll and just stay at level seven the whole game. Go for Annie three, Lulu three, right, stuff like that. Right. Um, but if you're going for nine Elderwood, you need to be level eight. So I think that's what I do. I'm also really far off like Annie and Lulu. So I think my game plan is not to play the mage version, but play like the nine other version. That, that makes sense oh. for a lot of reasons because of what you just said about kind of being behind on the Annie and the Lulu side of things. But yeah. also, oh, and you beat the Nasus there. That feels good. But uh, also uh, because you've got a lot of HP. So you've got the luxury yeah. of, of saving up right now and, you know, maybe spending a little bit of HP instead of gold to, you know, hang in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually, in a, this is probably like, like that's what I'm saying. Like, if you if you have if you have a good stage two, and you're playing this comp, it's probably a top four because your your stage four is also going to be really really strong. Right. Um. Because so, you're probably gonna hit like it's it's two and three costs. Lulu Vagar and then Rakan and then Nunu Maokai. They're all two three costs. Yeah. One cost, so it's easier to hit. All you need is like one Aesol, one Zaya. So it, it's 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 very easy. It's very likely that you'll hit. So it's kind of crazy that you still weren't able to get the Elderwood Spatula, but honestly, the Hextech Gunblade is probably a higher priority item at this point, isn't it? Um, what do you think? So let me think. Um, I think um, the Elderwood Spat is more high. Is is so Elderwood Spat makes allows me to get like top two. It's a and higher Hextech end Gun item. <clears throat> it's a higher cap. Yeah, higher it, cap, it gives me yeah. a higher cap um, because the spatula. If I don't get a cloak here, it's like a dead spatula, right? Mm -hmm. If I if I don't get a cloak or tier, the next drop it's a dead spatula. But the sword has a lot of outs. The sword can be a rod for Gunblade. It could be a bow for Giant Slayer. It could be a belt for Zeke's. Um, it could be chain for his GA. Right. Uh, so I think like a lot of another tip, like when you're going for items, you need to complete the item that has less outs for you. Hmm. Um, it's better. Like a lot of times people ask me like it's a uh, you have a sword rod and glove. And I always send Gunblade instead of Jeweled Gauntlet. And people are like, why? And they're, I'm like, uh, if I'm playing this comp, because uh, Glove is easier to get rid of, because you can get a Tier and Rod yeah, or PG. Sure. But Sword is harder to get um, to get rid of than Glove. That's a really good point. And, and it's it's something I think a lot of it, it's a rule a lot of us, I think, play by already without really thinking about it. But it's something I haven't actually heard vocalized before, that like the way you slam your item components can be partially due to you know what sort of items you're going to have the highest likelihood of completing right as far as like that power of item versus your board so that's yeah, yeah that's interesting also yeah you, um you, this is why you need to keep in check you, you have to keep take note of like what items you already natural mm -hmm. because the items that you didn't natural you're more likely to get so then it's kind of True. like a math, math equation where you have to like okay what items do i have left and then what else do i have and what what's the most highest probability i'm going to get that item and then you slam your items accordingly or you go for items on the carousel accordingly and stuff like that exactly so i want to back up a little bit and talk about something uh in regards to an earlier decision you made uh because 
one thing I think a, a lot of people are tempted to do when they have that like double a soul shop and they have these items, they're like, oh, well, maybe I should just itemize a soul right now instead of Vagar and all that. But uh, as someone who myself played a ton of the Vagar reroll comp uh, earlier in the set, um, I still have a lot of faith in Vagar as a carry, but it seems like it's it's something that, you know, less people sort of think of when they play this comp. It's like a soul or bust, right? But I think this game is a great illustration of that doesn't need to be the case, does it? Yeah, so wait. Oh, another wow, got we got three spats this game? Holy crap. I don't remember. Yeah, this. so this, okay, so you know, you know, you know, wait, do I not end up getting a Elder Wood spat? Oh shoot, I don't have an Elder Wood spat. Now you just fawned in the end. All right. Wow, it's it's um, been a few weeks since I've watched this game, so I was kind of re trying to remember everything as we went through it, but that's fun. So that means I can't get nine Elder Wood. So yeah. that means I'm probably going for like seven mage, maybe, or something. Mm -hmm. Um staying at six Elder Wood. But yeah, to to your question, um, Normally you stack Aesol because Aesol is really OP. Right. And he's um he is like so strong. He's way um he's a way more reliable carry than Vagar. But in this case it's kind of different because I have blue buff. Mm -hmm. Blue buff is not that good on Aesol, but it's really good on Vagar. Right. Uh, secondly, I didn't have Aesol 2 yet. So you're not gonna slam gunblade and stuff on Aesol 1 uh compared to a chosen Vagar. Right. Right? Like I have item remo removal here. I'm very close to Vagar 3, so I just stick to Vagar 3 carry. But if it was only a Vagar 2, normally you do want to item remove it and put the items on Aesol. Mm -hmm. Because Vagar 2, late game, he, he um there's too many units for him to uh, cycle through. And he doesn't your whole team will die before he can like start ramping up. Um, right. If that makes sense. Uh it also it also matters how early you got this Vagar to start stacking him up. Mm -hmm. There's a three. Um, yeah. yeah, Vagar 3. Um I don't even I don't so now I'm just looking of how to like how i can cap my board i think this is a um, what people need to think about when they're playing in tournaments obviously you're going to high roll and low roll so then you need to get the best possible placement when you high roll and you, ne you need to get the best possible placement when you low roll so like right. what i mean by that is when you high roll you need to try to get play for first but when you low roll you want to try to play for like sixth instead of eighth and that's how you can be a good tournament player yep exactly just get as many points as you can avoid losing yeah. as many points as you can depending on the format yeah, uh, I, I want to talk about your positioning again really quick here because you've been on the same side of the board for a long time. And again, that kind of flies in the face of what a lot of pros say, where it's like, well, you want to swap every turn. You've been doing some scouting, so you have a pretty good awareness of where everybody else is kind of lined up. Um, but traditionally as well, the Vagar carry, you kind of put him in that left side pocket that we talked about you know, earlier in the game. Uh, what's I, I'm curious about the main reason for staying on the right side so heavily for this particular game. Um, so... When you play this comp, you need to scout and see. You all, you just want to be on the opposite side of them for the ASL, right. basically. Um, but to be honest, um, in order to play, like for me to play better in this game, if I, I need to check what side I want to be on, right? Yeah. If I want to be on the right side, I should go left in the beginning and then go right last second. Right. Um, but I think I was like lazy in this, but you should never be lazy <laughs> in a tournament like this. But I have you have to move like eight units, you know? So it's kind yeah. of like. But it, it, it will help. Like, it's better than staying here. Because people can just easily, easily, easily position for you. Also, late game, you you, you, you can't value keeper positioning that much. Because like this, um, the Morgana and the Aurelias will just kill your entire team. Mm -hmm. um, so you should, have you should like, not value keeper positioning that hard this late into the game. Um, but generally, generally, you want, you just want to, um, yeah, you just want to switch sides depending on what, uh, Oh my god! If I get this Elder Wood spot, oh, wow! This game yeah, is I was gonna say <laughs> your last pick, but I don't. I don't recall anyone else really competing for this item, so we'll see. But so that's... if like um if this is a tournament where oh. like I needed to get first to win uh -huh. or to qualify, um the right play would be to deny the Elder Wood spot, even yeah. though they don't need it. Yep. I think they um, might have been running Elder Wood. You clicked on the board for a second, but I can't remember. But either way, yeah, that's that's definitely another part of it too. Is that uh if they want to give themselves a chance to get back into it, like I like Ike, you know, no doubt did during this game. Yeah, denying those items is pretty pretty clutch. I think, I think I'm think i slow rolling on level 8 right now to get Rakan 3, because I have 3 items invested in Rakan. Right. So getting Rakan 3 is actually really, really good. Um. Yeah, so, so 7... Oh, okay. Zaya 2 is nice. So... So yeah, the, as we talked about earlier, like what do you kind of think of as your final comp, right? I mean, Rakan 3 is part of that. Uh, if you do go to level 8, what would you be putting in? Would it just be like a, another just generically strong legendary or something like a set? Or uh, what, what kind of was your plan here? 
So for sure. Oh wow, I'm, I'm still level seven. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I want to get Rakan three before I, before I go. Well, it, I, it's mainly because I have this spawn, right? Mm -hmm. But, but <clears throat> sorry. Um, first first of all, you're I'm for sure playing five mages because I have the mage mage bat. I have right. to play Lulu Vega and and Aesol, so that's already four mages, right? Mm -hmm. So you you're for sure gonna play five mages, and that's you're for sure gonna play Annie or Brand. Um, those are the best mages, and then um, the seven other one is kind of awkward. So I could technically drop the Maokai here for like um, a better unit, like a Zero or something. Yeah. But the final board is usually you want to play Orn, so you want to play Orn, and you probably want to pair Orn with a Vanguard like Sedge Two or Aatrox Two. Mm, right. And then, but since I'm slow rolling at level seven this game, I'm I'm probably never gonna go in level level nine. The game's probably gonna end when I'm la when I'm at level eight. Yeah. So I just need to think about what my level eight board is gonna be, <clears throat> and I think the strongest is just to play Orn over one of the Elderwoods. And then play a Vanguard, a two-star Vanguard. With that makes Orn. more sense. Like at this point, it's it's really the order of business is whatever gives your Vagar more opportunities to shoot people, right? So it's it's a uh, kind of whatever you can do to build that front line. Um, yeah, stall time. Yeah. Another thing to mention too is you you talked about um, keeper positioning not mattering as much at this point in the game because the damage numbers are getting so high. The same can kind of be said for the Brawler buff, right? That uh, Maokai and Nunu get together. That amount of HP and AD is kind of negligible at this point in the game. So it's easy, like you said, to replace that with an Orn and then put another Vanguard in instead. Yeah, so Brawler is pretty useless late game. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, uh, my reasoning, like, a lot of times I don't end up replacing this because I, I'm slow, I, I don't want to invest, like, the 12 gold immediately into, like, a 2-star Sedge or Aatrox. Because I need the gold to roll for like Rakan two, Rakan three, and um, basically Rakan three. I want yeah. to be staying above as much gold as possible. <clears throat> um, so at this point, like I, I, like you know, like obviously Aatrox two will be better than this Maokai, but then you have to be holding like all the Aatroxes on your bench. You're probably not gonna hit Aatrox two anyways at level seven. Yeah. Um. So Maokai two giving Brawler buff and it also gets six Elderwood is not a bad like. Uh, like unit to, to just play right now right it's gonna be <clears throat> strong for for the moment anyway until you hit that rakan three and you can start to level up a little bit more zeke's makes sense on the aurelian soul and you've got the luxury gold to pick up a little bit here ah there's a roll down okay yeah so set should be on set should uh set should go in for sure or or going or or and set should probably go in yep. yeah set is really good in this comp yeah because you need you need like a solo frontline uh you need like a solo frontliner for this comp and Set is like one of the best solo frontliners because it benefits him, and he comes back anyways. Mm -hmm. So uh, the reason why you need a solo frontline is because you need to angle away the AOE ults onto your clump, like Sejuani ults and Aurelia ults. That's why I put my set like one hex to the left. Oh, okay. I was gonna ask about that. Yeah. Yeah, because if you if you put it just in the middle, if if the, if the, if the enemy AOE units on the left side, it'll angle towards my clump, right? Right. But if I'm one to the left. If they put it in the middle, it'll it'll angle to the left, so it won't hit like Sejuani and Irelia will slice left, and it won't hit my clump. Well, that's that's an interesting thing to to bring up too because it's something I think that gets overlooked a lot. Where most of the front line heat will occur on the right or left side and not the center, perhaps. So uh, yes. especially as the game goes on and people start to gravitate towards grouping up on the left or right side of their own boards, so it does make a lot of sense to kind of scoot the set a little bit over to the uh, the opposite side. Oh, and that was yeah, a, yeah. a fake move to try to mess people up because we're down to the last three now. It's it's you, Spencer, and yeah, uh, I do Spencer. this classic. This is what I call an ankle breaker, an ankle breaker, <laughs> uh, on my on my stream, uh -huh. where I just fake left and fake right. But now I do it so much that people don't get tricked anymore. But <laughs> it only works in um, high elo because uh -huh. they're gonna. What usually happens is they look at your board, right? Yeah, and then they will see you swapping sides. Then they will go back to their board and position for you as if you swap sides. Right. But that's when that's when you, that's why uh, it works sometimes because they see you swap sides, but they they don't see you swap back. Yeah. Um, so that's why this only works in high elo mostly. But now people are even better now, so they'll just look at you even longer. And if they mm. see you fake fake out, then they'll just position for you on the current side. Well, like Spencer, he's probably just holding the shroud and just like, there's no way you can dodge shroud unless you unless I split up my team because. Oh yeah, so oh. I did the fake out again. Oh, yep. and my APM sucks. But so he still got me because he's probably just holding my uh my screen, and he has to move one unit where I have to move like ten. Exactly. But in, in this case, I just needed to split up my my team to be honest. But I think Vega three is really broken with five mage. 
Yeah, it's definitely the combination of Vagar 3, but the Rakan 3 making such a big difference as well, uh, slowing down. I guess not the Kale this time because that QSS is going to keep her safe, but either way, the damage is big. It's a it's a first. <laughs> and, it's a first, uh, yeah. Yeah, and a really interesting game too. Uh, unorthodox comp for the patch and a cool approach to that. All right, well, here we are. We're going to go into our second game. Uh, just to recap that last one, what would you say is kind of like the, the main point to consider when talking about that, that Vagar game that we just watched? Um, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, pretty simple. Like cultist, cultist TF opener into a six cultist mid game into a elderwood, uh, roll down. And when you're rolling on seven, it's not, actually not that uncommon to hit like a chosen Vega or chosen Lulu, Lulu um, mm -hmm. because of the percent the chosen odds. And then into the, you know, I got the mage cap, um, really good items on Vagar, and I just, uh, scaled, I was just up, I wasn't, uh, like, up tempo in front of everyone because of Vagar 3, Yeah. and ended up getting a Fawn, which was really high roll, I think the Fawn secured me a, a, a first, um, but yeah, just strong every stage, basically. Okay, yeah, play that best board, so, now we jump ahead in time, this is an 11.4 patch game, this is from a, a very recent tournament, uh, do you want to kind of set the stage for us here with this one? Yeah, so this tournament was called the UBC Lunar Summit. It was um, it's uh, University of British Columbia. They hosted it, mm -hmm. um, seven hundred fifty dollars prize pool, and um, uh, any I think anyone could sign up. Um, there weren't weren't that many super strong players, but there were st still some challenger players like Aegon, um, Garchomp Pro, and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I think this game was the um, the fifth round. There were seven rounds in total, so this is the game before the finals. And okay. I think this will be a good game to see uh, to see how you play like strongest board. Cool. Because it's not like it's not like um, it's like a this is a good game to see how to play the new patch basically. Like you play strongest board and you slam items and depending on what items you slammed will determine what comp you're gonna play late game and then you roll down for your late game comp stuff like that. Yeah, I mean that sounds like classic team fight tactics right there. And and I haven't gotten yeah. to see this game yet, so so I'm hyped about this. Um, but you ended up with the Tristana with the bow to start things off with. So uh, Tristana 2 there, you're fine completing that because she's got the bow on her. That's a very useful item on Tristana. But where's yeah. your mindset at right now in terms of like how you're going to sort of uh, prepare this early game? You're thinking kind of Vanguard Sharpshooter? Yeah, so Tristana is, I think, one of the most OP one-cost units right now. She, uh, Tristana's okay. probably going to get nerfed next patch. Um, but uh, I ended up high rolling getting the Tristana with bow. Uh, and if I didn't get the Tristana with bow, I would probably not have a Tristana too. So th that's actually very huge. But yeah, Sharpshooter, Vanguard Frontline. Or Sharpshooter, whatever Frontline. That's why I picked up the Brawlers as well. Uh, but when you're playing Tristana though, you will most likely play Vanguard Brawline, Frontline because you're going to be playing Braum right. plus a Dragon Soul, which is most likely Brand. Because Dragon Soul is super strong right now. It's also probably going to get nerfed. Um, yeah, the, the ability to get that Dragon Soul hit like immediately after the transfer is... is so good yeah. in the, these really early rounds yeah that change made dragon soul really good because it'll never make your units like um useless yeah. but i actually misplayed here because i needed i needed to make zeke's here but on tristana that, uh, that means i needed an item holder on zeke's but i can't get rid of nidalee garen but i ended up having to sell nidalee here to put the zeke's on tristana when really? i could have just so i i see you yeah Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, I, I'm just surprised it's it's that vital for you to try to get a win streak going. Because that's kind of the plan, right? Is you really, really want a win streak with this? It's super vital. You need to... Every round matters. And winning the first round is super important because my my board is actually really strong. Zeke's uh, with Bo, Tristana, 2, with Braum already, and Garen pair, Nidalee pair. I'm yeah. going for a uh, 5 streak. And I should have built the Zeke's on a useless unit, sold it, and put it on Tristana. Then yeah. I would have Nidalee pair and Garen pair. This is actually a very, very huge misplay hmm. because Nidalee 2 is actually very huge right. in, in, um, in for me to streak. I end up hitting the Wukong 2 here, which is also pretty high roll. Like, Tristana is broken. Like, <laughs> Tristana is stronger than Chosen Nidalee, this Tristana. Um, oh. And especially with Zeke's. Like, even though I don't have a Chosen, I think I end up, like, winning everyone. And I was also really shocked. Um so yeah, I always pick up Tristana for this patch. Cause yeah, this this surprised me uh, seeing this move right now because uh, generally the strongest thing in the early game is two costs, right? So to deny the opportunity of getting one to put the item on uh, was a was a, a bold decision for sure. It's still a strong board regardless. Obviously the Wukong two has a lot of HP. Tristana two is going to be doing a lot of damage. It's a pretty strong board you've ran into though. 
Um, and the new Elise yeah, so this, seems pretty this good. This is too. like um classic like strongest board, right? Like yeah. strongest board. I'm not thinking about the future. I'm not thinking about Zeke's on the future chosen. Mm-hmm. My strongest board right now is Zeke's on Tristana. Mm-hmm. So I put it on Tristana. Right. Strongest board, Wukong in. I ended up winning this fight. Like, how did I even win this fight? I don't even know. This guy had a chosen <laughs> Diana 2 with IE, but you know. I am a sure little Tristana's bit surprised numbers, as well. All right. I'm pretty sure Tristana's numbers are 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 oh, you know who else is also OP? Braum. Braum was already good last patch and he got buffed this patch. Mm-hmm. He's he he is the best solo frontliner. If you put it like that, he tanks so much damage along with Jax. So I think that's I think having Tristana and Braum early game, you're going to it's gonna be a really, really strong board. Um pretty sure it's going to it should be nerfed. So what are you thinking about for your gold right now? Um you're thinking you can make economy, obviously, but you know, really valuing oh. the win streak. Is there ever a situation where you go to five? Like do you pre level? Like uh what Yeah, so Right. In this, I remember in this case, I normally I level I use the eight gold to go five here and play Dragon Soul brand. That's what I was kind of expecting, yeah. Yeah, but um, the reasons why I didn't do it is because I don't have a chosen yet. Mm. Um, normally, if I had a chosen, I, I would always do it, but I don't want to risk going five and just. I think I scouted and I saw one guy that was like really strong that I haven't fought yet, so uh, I didn't want to okay. take the risk, yeah. especially because I don't have a chosen. Like if you don't have a chosen, your board is not going to be that strong. Um, even though brand is totally like adding dragon soul is totally um like viable to level to five i think i misplayed here also i think it was brand over nidalee here dragon okay. soul i think is better than trump shooters uh, this is a slight misplay um but yeah i think that i always i usually always level to five at two four or two three if i can get uh an extra um synergy in. um just if, and, and if i have a streak just yeah. to put more pressure on the lobby and um if you win, you actually get the gold back that you invested in. That's what I was kind of curious about. Uh, I agree with you uh, on the the Dragon Soul over the Sharpshooter point, just because the extra bounce from the Sharpshooter that damage is probably going to be less than the Dragon Soul procs with yeah. the forty yeah, percent sure. HP. Yeah, but it's um, but again, it's something a lot of people would pass over, right? Because just traditionally, yeah. Sharpshooters has been just the way to go. You know, it's a relatively new change that you'd want to consider that Dragon Soul. Yeah. Um, I end up hitting the Gwinsus on Tristana here, which is super, super high roll as well. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Gwinsus, if you have Gwinsus, uh, Tristana's best item, because it, it synergizes really well with Dragon Soul right. and her kit. Um, I end up, not, I was thinking about taking this Nasus, but if you can look at my board, it's actually, like, who do I replace for Nasus? Like, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe Nidalee, right? But it's still not, like, the power spike from playing, uh, taking out Sharpshooters and playing Nasus I don't think it's is, is that big. I, I think I, maybe I should have t- played it for strongest board, and I'm tricking. But I ended up being a little bit more greedy. Um, yeah, I don't I don't think it's the worst decision ever. Uh, just because like you don't have any items to support that Nasus, and a lot of times you kind of need that even if he is chosen early on. But it's, yeah, I don't yeah. yeah I don't have the items to support him, right. and um, I'm already at two five. I'm already level five, right? Yeah. Getting a one cost chosen at this time, it's probably like you can definitely like greed it. Right. So I've seen a lot of people uh, do the three-star Tristana build. Um, your leveling obviously says you're not thinking about it, especially because you just sold the extra Tristana. Uh, where do you kind of rate the uh, the reroll Tristana versus just playing a straight-up game like you're kind of doing here? Uh, so reroll Tristana is is does work, mm-hmm. um, but I would never play reroll Tristana just because Tristana chosen Tristana is already so strong. Mm-hmm. You're probably if you get, it's like NASA chosen last last, last patch. You're probably guaranteed a streak if you get a chosen Tristana. Right. So why not just play strongest board? You have a free, you have a free fast eight basically, and then um, you can just play like a comp like Kale or something instead of risking not hitting the Tristana three. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. So when you think about your late game right now, because um, we're still early, but I'll always during this stage in the game, players are thinking about what their their final comp is going to theoretically look like. So what what are your thoughts about that right now as you're playing this? Yeah, so obviously a lot of high challenger players would agree it's KO from here because you have Zeke's and you have Gwinsu's. Right. Since you have since since I since you if you slam Gwinsu, you're probably not going to play Olaf carry because Olaf doesn't really use Gwinsu's that well. Yeah. You can maybe play Trainer carry, but the most optimal one is Kale. So I'm looking to play Kale from here. Um Yeah, I'm looking to play Kale from here. So I think you do need to decide what comp you're going to play because you need to know what items to go for from carousels, starting from stage three. 
it's so funny because uh, you're hitting a lot of really good chosens like the Zed and yeah. Lulu, but you just don't have the items to support it per se. It just doesn't fit in my board. Yeah, you know, it just doesn't. It's just awkward. This is one of the so worst like, feelings for me. Was is when I I see these chosens that I would like in a in the blink of an eye buy in like any other game, but just this game, it's just not the right choice. You know. Yeah, it's just it's just like really really awkward. And yeah. look, I five streaked with no chosen. Yeah, and it's like it's just just on broken. Um, <laughs> oh, also it's because uh. They nerfed Chosen's, right? So right. now it's not that crucial to have Which, a Chosen on your board. I think that's great. I, I love yeah. Chosen for the... I've always loved the Chosen mechanic for the ability specifically of playing more flexible comps because you get the extra... You know, it counts for an extra one of the trait, right? Um, yeah. I never really liked that they were stronger than the average two-star. You know, having a two-star already is good. Why do we need to give them extra stats? Um, so I really like where things are at now where they don't make as big of a difference as they did before because they let you play games like this, you know, which, which feels good. Yeah. Because chosen's being too strong. It just depends on who gets the better chosen mm -hmm. early game and if they just stay street because of that. But now you actually have to use your brain and play strongest board and position well to beat, to beat people, you know? So speaking of um, positioning, you made some, uh, swaps there. Wow. A three, one kale over on that side. Yeah. I, I end up leveling here, uh, to six at three, one. If you're five streaking, you always go six here. Usually. Right. And um, I play a Diana for Spirit. And look, I, wa I beat this guy. Yeah. This is a, this, it, like, Gwinsu's Tristana with Dragon Soul is not balanced. Like, th this is. Oh, I end up getting a hmm. um, Chosen Shivana. And yeah, you this... for sure copy this because this is Dragon Soul, right? Right. It's better than Brad, for sure. And this is a perfect. Uh, this is the perfect uh, Chosen for me, you know? So. Yeah. She's got um, like her little built-in brawler buff, so she's you essentially don't ever need to even add a second brawler to this game because she's already giving herself the two brawler buff anyway. So it's just a very strong individual add, right? Yeah. So my greeting paid off, and I think you can, you can afford a greed because they up they uh, buff the chosen odds, right? So you, right. you're you're more likely to find chosens now. So you, it's not like if you skip a chosen, you'll never find one. Right. For those of uh, you that are aren't as familiar, in 11.4 now, it's a full 50% chance every natural roll, so every round roll over to uh, to see a chosen. Up from like, yeah, what, 35, and, um, I think it was. Yeah. So I don't think this game was like particularly high roll, right? Like the only thing I hit was like Tristana two. And yeah. I had good items. Um, <clears throat> I kind of low rolled my stage three items. I, I got a Zephyr, mm -hmm. and um, you you never you never. I mean, you could slam Zephyr for streak, but I, I'd rather greet the items for better. It requires. You know, it if you get a, if you slam that early Zephyr, it requires like a level of sweatiness uh, to your play round round that not many people are willing to do. Like it's, I think uh, um, if you're playing for top four, you could slam the Zephyr and just uh, Zephyr's just a sweat. Try mm -hmm. to get, try to continue your streak, but I I rather save the Giant Spell for another Zeke's or the Cloak for another Ice Cream Cone or for Chalice right. or QSS or something, uh, defensive item for your Kale. I did not. I end up losing to that guy, um, because he had like six brawlers or something, but. Mm -hmm. I mean, he also had the he also had the Runins on Shivano, uh, Shivano too, which is just one of the strongest things in the game in general at in stage yeah. three. So it's it's very difficult to uh, to beat the, those boards. You almost um, did though, regardless. Yeah, I uh, I end up hitting Brom too, which is like super broken. He stalls so much time. Mm -hmm. Look at the damage. Yeah, look at Tristana damage. Look at Tristana yeah. damage versus uh, Shivano chosen. <laughs> Even though it has two items, like I don't know. Yeah, it's all about that runes. I, I feel like Shivana just like doesn't exist as a carry unless you put a rune in Hurricane on her. Like once you do that, then yeah. then it's that's when it gets good. Aside from that, she's okay at best, you know. Yeah. So I think um, I think I have two options this game. Um, most uh, Kale is obviously the best, uh, but I can also play like six Dragon Soul if I pick up like a rune on tier for Shivana. Right. Uh, but for six Dragon Soul, you need really good ASO items. And Gwinsu's is, is okay, but it's not like the best. Mm -hmm. I, I think Zeke's is I I, I I go for Zeke's here, right? Yeah. It would so, make the most sense out of those choices. Yeah. Oh like yeah. That. I was thinking of Zeke's or Sunfire Cape. Um because Sunfire Cape on the Braum 2 will actually have a lot of value. True. Uh, it's, it's a little bit late in the game, but do you feel like there's like a, a, a limitation for when su adding Sunfire Cape is is really useful? Because I feel like the later the game goes, the less it it. Uh, the less impactful it becomes. What do you think? Yeah, so I think that's a that's a that's a reason why I didn't pick up the Sunfire Cape because it's already stage three point five. Yeah, three five. So Sunfire Cape is getting worse and worse value as the game goes on. I'd rather get an item that scales really well late game, which is Zeke's, especially double Zeke's. Um, 
will make my KO comp in the in the future really really strong. Right. It helps the uh, Shivana a lot as well uh, at this point in the game, yeah. just to get her attacking quicker because she's gonna do some. And Tristana with Quinsu's and yeah. her kit, it's just like it's really really good. So my items are really good right now, but like I didn't even natural it. Right, I, I ended up getting it from the carousel to complete it. Yeah. Um, this is like when like maybe a, a sweatier lobby will come into play where they'll look at what you need and they'll take it from you. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think any players were looking for that here. Uh, so when you look at that, uh, when you look at that cloak on your bench right now, ooh, there's an Aurelian soul, not bad. Um, are you kind of thinking runes for Shivana? What what item do you want to build out of that? Chalice. Uh, so I'm playing Kale, right? So it's yeah, I'm playing Kale, so it's either Chalice oh, or yeah, QSS. Yeah. Right. Chalice or QSS. Um, but it just depends on what my strongest board is. Chalice will be a little bit awkward because I already have all my aura items on on Tristana, mm -hmm. and if I put Chalice, it'll probably be on like either Shivana or Timo, and then the positioning will be awkward. Right. Um, but you know, you get what you can, mm -hmm. whatever is your strongest board, both, they both work. I end up hitting an ASO here. So I think I, you know, I could look to play six dragon. So ASO carry, uh, KO game. This could also be like a Trinomir carry game with Quinsu's on Trinomir and double Zeke's on to buff the Trinomir. So just where, keep your options open basically. So where do you put Trinomir on your, like your tier list right now? Cause I've seen it very pretty wildly. He's, he's definitely better now than he used to be, but where where do you rate him personally? Uh, I think Trinomir is like S tier. I think Trinomir is wow. Okay. Um, I like Trinomir better than Olaf, um, because Trinomir can is more flexible with items. Like I, I think I had a game in this tournament where I, I was playing Kale. I had R F C Q S S Hodge, and I was rolling down for Kale, and I didn't hit Kale, but I hit a chosen Trinomir. Mm -hmm. So I ended up picking up the chosen Trinomir and putting the R F C Q S S and Hodge on Trinomir. And then it actually 1v9 to like every fight. I was super surprised. Wow. And then it helped me go to level 9. Um, so yeah, Trinomir is really good. But I think you need, I think Warlord buff really helps him. If you can get 3 Warlord. And uh, oh, yeah. well, obviously du Duelist helps, helps him as well. Well, he was supposed to be that, you know, alternative option Warlord carry, right? Where everyone was using the Katarina previously. And it's like, now try Trinomir, right? It comes along with the Slayer side of things, obviously. But yeah, probably, probably still a little bit underutilized. Need to see that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, so with your chosen Tristana right now, it, we're in four one. So this is a big turn, right? Yeah. So my HP is ninety six. I have a lot of money. It's always a fast eight from here, just because mm -hmm. my board is already strong. I ended up playing Keeper here, which I don't think was my strongest board. Okay. Um. So I so if I I signed the Chalice right, so I'm playing Kale because I have another bow to work with. Yeah. Um. A, a bow rod sword, which is really really good items to work with on my last Kale item. Um, it could be GA for Kale, it could be RFC, it could be Quinsu's, it could be Jewel Gauntlet, like, there's so many options. Yeah. Um, all I need to do is hit Kale, though. So I ended up losing, like, pretty hard here. So I was, like, questioning myself, like, oh, was that really the strongest board? Right. I don't think playing Keeper is good, because I already have enough frontline with Braum. I should probably be, uh, stayed with the Spirit, with, um, Diana. But who knows? So what I'm kind of wondering here, because you look at this, we know there's at least one other Kale player in the lobby already right now. Do you feel like uh, you're tunneling a bit too hard on the Kale, perhaps, where you you do have a setup where Dragon Soul is, you know, a viable option? Um, or is it just Kale or Bust here, no matter what? Uh, it's not Kale or Bust, but I'll, 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 I'll figure it out when I roll down at 4-5, sure. 4-5-1. Four, five, four, five, okay. Um, but it's totally, I can totally take uh, Aesol here as well, because I have the Gunblade. Right. I have a Gunblade and then Double Zeke's and um, uh, Chalice, so... I'm thinking so that's why I'm keeping the ASO, right? Yeah. I'm, 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 I might play uh, ASO carry if I don't hit uh, Kale. This is what you have to do uh, for this patch now. You need to have, like, what's your first choice, what's your second choice. Um, yeah, I think what's that's... Your, like, what's your backup choices? If you, if you end up not hitting your first choice, you can just play for top four, you know? Yeah, I think that's really important to bring up, too, is, is that you... If you're playing best board, you have to have, like you're saying, uh, a number of different compositions you're thinking of. You can have one you want to lead towards the most, you know, in this case, that, that Kale that you mentioned, but you got to have fallback options too, because you never know what other people are going to hit on their roll downs, um, what other people are just going to find naturally. So that's that's good to see, especially uh, especially what made me ask that question is it was the ability you have now to build that Hextech Gunblade. Yeah, and I think there's, um, I think there's like two, I, I think it, this is when you need to scout. Like mm -hmm. before you transition, you should scout how many people are contesting your comp. And what, so, so you know, like, an, what's a backup comp yeah. that you can play. 
Uh, but it's like, I'm going to lean towards Kale. I have so much money, and there's only like three Kales gone. And you need to also look at their gold. Right. You look at their gold to see if they're going to roll, when they're going to roll, right? Like, obviously, if they have like 20, 30 gold here, level seven, they're not going to roll until stage five one. So you can maybe roll at four five to get it before them, mm-hmm. um, which I have the gold to do. Um, but I really don't like rolling at four five a lot, which is like fast eight. Yeah, because you only have one turn to transition. It's also really hard. I'd rather much just level to eight at four five, not roll, and then wait until five stage five one to roll. So I have two turns to do it, which mm. is uh way way cleaner. That makes sense. And you, like and you, you said, you're in a money. you're in a great spot right now. Like you you have a lot of luxury in this in this lobby that a lot of other players don't have, and that you have the combination of high gold and high HP, um, and a yeah. pretty strong board too. So I'm high sure gold, high HP, good items. Um, yeah. So you're not thinking about just top four this game. You're thinking, what can I do to make this into a first? Yes, I'm. I'm playing for first this game. Right. Uh, like, no, like by the time stage four comes around, you maybe sometimes even stage three, you know, you know what place you're playing for. Yeah. And that will change your place out a little bit to be a little greedier, to roll down more, stuff like that. Uh, so when you do scout, oh, and there's a lantern, and oh, okay, we get a, we, and it's a lot of. We get a ton of gold here. So a uh-huh. lot of people would actually go maybe go fast nine here. But I don't think fast nine is that good in this in this meta. Okay. It's also really really risky. So unless you're playing for like unless you need a first, um, I would just like save up all my gold, roll at roll 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 down at level eight, hmm. which I think I end up doing. Uh, you can totally go nine with this board, but you'll probably bleed out a lot. And then, and then when you go nine, you have like one or two turns to stabilize, or else you're just gonna get bot four. Yeah. Um, and you're not really thinking yeah. about legendary comp as much because you haven't hit any naturals, uh, you know, any lucky high roll legendaries early on or something like that. Yeah, like yeah. I, every time I go fast, fast, um, fast nine, I never end up hitting the legendary that I want to play. And <laughs> I then, know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, like oh, yeah. I, I built Samira items and then I never hit any Samira. It's like worth all my gold went. Like you can just roll down an eight here and get a free top four instead of right. risking the, the fifth when you go nine. Uh, and and to be honest, like I'm playing Kale here, right? Uh, I'm gonna be rolling like what close to 100 gold uh, for Kale. And to be honest, it does take a lot of gold to hit a full Kale board. Like if you want like a full Kale board, right? Like Kale two, Kindred two, Yumi two, Sejuani two, Aatrox two, um, Aurelia two, Shen two. Mm-hmm. Like <clears throat> if you want the max complete board, it actually takes a lot of gold. So, um. I think rolling like this much gold at level A is totally fine. It feels like there's a lot of, as, as you've done a bit of scouting and I've been looking at some of these other boards, it feels like there's a lot of other Kales and Kindreds uh, already kind of popping up in the lobbies. Uh, are you concerned yeah. at all at this point that you're not going to really be hitting it? Uh, I'm not that concerned because this guy has Kale, but I know he's not going to play Kale because he mm-hmm. is playing, he has an Elderwood board. He's probably going to sell the Kale yeah. uh, uh, when he rolls down. That's a good point. Um, and the other Kale players, they're really poor. And um, they're really poor and they're probably not going to be able to roll like as much as me. So I'm not too worried, but obviously you need to have uh, backups. Like, look, I- I'm going to roll like so much gold here. I'm like, Oh, there's no way I don't hit mm. uh, either a chosen kale or a kill or a kill too. <clears throat> right. So passing over, rolling here. Right. Passing yeah. over a couple chosens there. Uh, and uh, there's a, there's a swap. Okay. So, you do get some items on the Kindred. She's going to be your your aura item carrier anyway, so you still end up with a pretty uh, yeah. Pretty, so I didn't hit a kill start. yet. I'm like uh, kind of sus, but I yeah. have 50 gold more gold to roll. Um, like you know how I saw Sejuani chosen there, and Sejuani yeah. chosen is usually a really good chosen. But when you don't have a carry yet, or if you have if you don't if you don't have direction yet, you should never pick up a sedge yet. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to get like a like right now. If I get a sedge sed, sed chosen, I'll probably take it because I already have the kale. And stuff but usually you don't want to um pick up like a tank chosen if you don't have a carry yet right uh so you didn't pick up the uh, spirit chosen yumi like you already had one but i suppose that when you're rolling at level eight you're wanting more than three costs oh and there you go all right that yeah, i didn't out. Uh, i don't think you like pick, i don't think you pick up spirit yumi unless it's like your last roll mm-hmm. uh mystic yumi is good but spirit yumi is actually not that good because you're gonna play kindred anyway so that's three spirits it's hard to find the fourth uh, in that comp isn't it and then, and then, yeah, it's it's just awkward to play the fourth. Yeah. You usually don't play the fourth. You have to play Timor or Diana, which is bad. Um, I ended up hitting a, a KO Chosen here, uh, but I did roll, like, 100 gold. Right. Um, 
Right, because so, uh, some people would look at that and be like, oh, wow, what a high roll. But it really wasn't. Like you said, you rolled, a, you know, in, in practical terms, you rolled about 80 gold to get there. Yeah. So the ability to get that <laughs> kale didn't come from a high roll as much as it came from just preparing yourself to be able to have the luxury of rolling that much at that round from uh, all the other things you did earlier in the game. Yeah, and then, like, I rolled so much gold, I still don't have a sedge too, you know? I don't have a sedge too. Mm -hmm. Like, Leeson would be better than this Jax. Uh, but since I get to, since I hit a Divine Kale, I'm, I'm looking to play 4 Divine. Right. Um, but I don't need to play 4 Divine. I can just take out Aurelia and Jax with better units, but I think it's just my strongest board right now. So I hit an Aurelia too. I think my... Yeah, so right now, of course, I'm going to go 9, right? To yeah. play my win con, to count my board with, like, Leeson to, um, you know, maybe Ore and stuff like that. Uh, but I think this game, I found out that double Quinsu's Kale sucks. <laughs> I was going to say, that's a lot of crowd control coming in. I mean, you do have the GA. So like, I look, look how bad I lost. I was, like, I was so shocked. I thought I was like the strongest in the lobby. Yeah. Uh, this guy's a Kale 1. This guy this guy's a Kale 1. Um, it was just a lot, of, a lot of crowd control. And I mean, if yeah, you go back and look at how you went about making the items that are on your board right now, I don't think you can make too much argument for how you did that. Because... If you look at across all of this, you had, uh, what, like one Negatron cloak very early that ended up being part of a chalice. Um, and did you even have access to a, a glove anytime? So I think item-wise, you kind of made the best thing you could at the time, you know? Yeah, yeah. So this is the best thing I could make. Um, just because you're slamming items and, you know, you're not going to greed for perfect items. Yeah. This I So my only this my only option was either Gwinsu's or Titans, right? I have the chain vest there. Right. Um, I did decided to make double Gwinsu's. Um but this game made me realize that Kale, uh, you know, Double Quinces is, is not bad, but she'd be much better with a damage item like Jewel Gauntlet, mm -hmm. um, Rabadons, Hodge, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. See, I, I end up like losing like a lot of fights here, which I'm super shocked. Like, I'm like, oh, I thought I have a clear path to level nine, but apparently not. I'm losing fights. Yeah, it is. I, I'm, I'm only rolling for Sedge 2, so I don't even know if I'm. But I do have the magnetic remover so i can go for a better kill item um my chat was act actually telling me to get the duelist bat but oh. <laughs> the duelist bat is essentially the same thing as double guinsus like it's just giving yeah. me more attack speed so i don't think that solves my problem of like not having any dps but just like only attack speed right because it seems uh, like your issue isn't kale's attack speed she's attacking just fine it's it's a uh, getting to attack at all that's kale's problem right now just yeah. from all the crowd control that's coming in. Yeah. Not scaling my I'm not scaling the Gwinsu's hard yeah. enough. And also, um, I don't have like damage. I already have I, I think it's because like I already have like I have double Zeke's, mm -hmm. so I think I need a damage item. I ended up getting the blue buff Yumi. Um I don't know if that was the strongest item, but Blue Buff Yumi is actually so underrated. Oh, like, totally. I've been saying that for like for months, man. I mean, Blue Buff Yumi is, is so good because she basically just chain casts. Yeah, you chain cast and then it gives everyone in your team attack speed. And it's right. easier to it's easier to manipulate the Yumi casting with Blue Buff. Mm -hmm. So it, it'll always cast like on your KO or something, which is very actually very important. Right. Right. Your uh, Yumi positioning can affect that uh, a lot. So I, I've been mentioning QSS a lot for crowd control. You've been mentioning damage items. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of curious about that because for me, it's like the damage seems to be there, but she's just getting CC'd a lot. But but you think a damage item would make a, a bigger difference? How am I wrong, basically? Because you're obviously a much better player than me. So I, I, I want to know what I'm getting wrong thinking that uh, I need a Q. If I was in your position, I'd be like, I need QSS, not I need another damage item. Yeah, so you you only technically need one defensive item on Kale. So if you have two defensive items with GA QSS, it's kind of like overkill. oh, I mean like QSS instead of the GA. Like I'd be oh yeah, QSS the GA. instead of yeah. GA is good though. Yeah, QSS okay. is way better than GA in my opinion. Um, oh, so you're saying but, damage item along with GA and Ginsu specifically? It's like two damage item plus one defensive item. Right. So, right, right. Uh, but right now I'm thinking like oh, I want to get rid of one Ginsu for a damage item. Mm, okay. Which you can yeah. totally like, still do no with way. the magnetic remover. Yeah, there's no way I'm gonna like try to go for QSS and take out the GA for QSS. Actually, you know, that's actually fine too. I can also look for QSS. Okay. Um But I think GA is totally fine. Like GA GA QSS is totally fine. Just position well and then I think I end up being wait, no. Do I lose? No, uh, that's a strong kindred. Z uh, or Zillion? Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. With this board, I lost huh. four 
four times. Aren't you? Isn't it, isn't it crazy? I'd be so, I'd be so tilted right now. I I mean, look at your face too. You can tell the tilt is just lying just underneath the surface. You know. Yeah, like I rolled a hundred gold for a board, and I lost four times, and I even hit chosen wow. kale with like insane items. So it's like, so at this point, I'm like, okay, double Gwinsu sucks. I'm never building this again. But I end up getting the hot. Yeah, um, this is I'm big. Putting the hot for sure. Hodge, like Hodge plus remover, you know, makes a much better kale in this situation for sure. Yeah. So now you're thinking top four. This is like you're seeing this item is like this is my salvation from not uh, taking a fifth. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay, might as well play for top four here. Yeah. Because I don't know what happened. I think it was just like a comp uh, a combination of bad matchmaking RNG plus um, bad positioning, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, also, double quinces is really not that good. Uh, but I was forced to make it anyway, so. Um, I I am I am really surprised that you lost four in a row with this board actually because it definitely does not look like a weak board. You get add up three in there, which is a pretty nice little upgrade. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this Me is. Saying. I suppose so, as a pro player, this is going to be one of those games that you do want to go back and watch a couple times and really like dig into, huh? Yeah. Um, it's just some positioning mistakes, and also with Kale with the RFC, you could just get CC'd, you know. True. Kill with the RC or QSS, you, you could just be useless for a fight. But for me, um, the fact that I didn't panic and roll uh, stage five allowed me to go nine and get an upgrade my board into three adept plus Lee Sin. Yeah. Which I think allowed me to. Like, I almost lost this to one. I was so close. <laughs> but it allowed me to yeah. uh, make my board even stronger, right? I could have right. just rolled down at stage five. I could have just panicked and rolled down at stage five for stage two and just kept my board there. But I I, did, I decided to play. Um, I I just didn't I I didn't believe that my kale was this weak, so yeah. I just stuck with it. Well, it's it's interesting too because uh, we talked earlier about uh, when you were starting to lose these games and not panic rolling. But when you think about it practically, like you mentioned before, the only thing you really could have been rolling for was the Sejuani too, which really wouldn't have done a lot yeah. more for your board than just getting to nine and being able to improve the synergies, uh, like with three adept or something like that. And that's a big thing I think players who want to improve need to remember is to really think critically what will rolling get me you know because a lot of times you feel like you should roll because you start losing but it's not really the answer you know yeah sometimes you have to roll though because you're at one life sometimes and you're, yeah. you're probably gonna lose like every fight um the only thing i was rolling for is stage two plus maybe decent for jacks mm -hmm. uh but it also depends on what, you, you're, what you're playing for right if right. you're playing if you're just playing for top four you should just always roll there for stage two um because if you get like a top two, it doesn't matter. You just need top four to advance. Just play right. for top four, just roll down. But in this tournament, I uh, the points carry over until the end, so I need to play for. Um, I can't play for fourth here. I need to play for like top two. Yeah. So I decided to play a little bit more greedier. It's just a place out of it. But if it was a like if it was qualifiers where top four advances and the points reset anyways, mm -hmm. um, you sh you should probably roll there. Oh, it was Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy X for your your sub uh, sub gif. That oh makes yeah, more yeah. sense now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk about that earlier. All right. Well, let's let's check out this round. This is what a player that did beat you last time. It was a very close fight. Uh, I think this guy has four Mystic. That's why. But this, yeah, this one does. Not I don't know. Close. I don't know if it's the Hodge diff, or a Depth diff, or Leeson diff, but it's probably all three. Yeah. I mean, your board did get better in, in multiple ways since the last time you played that person. And it was really close the last time you played that person, too. So yeah. by their trajectory, like, versus yours, your stocks are definitely higher at this point. Uh, yeah, so... I don't even know if, if it was the Hodge did. Maybe Double Gwinces is not even that bad and my board just got stronger. Who knows? Yeah, I would kind of lean towards that, personally. Just as, as you know, just watching this game right now. Yeah, Hodge... Hodge is good, though. It allows you to um, cast faster, so that's good. Yeah. All right, so... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Trap Claw. Yeah, I mean, it makes it makes sense on a lease-in, but you probably just want to wait and slam it until the round begins in a lot of cases. Yeah, someone hit Zaya, someone hit Zaya 3 this game, so I was like, what? Ooh, yeah. Right here. And Zaya 3, three. Nine, El 9 Elderwood, Zaya 3, Nunu wow. 3. Wow, that's an insane board. So I'm like, okay, I'm playing for second. Um, positioning, you know, just swapping sides last second. Um, turn lining everything because there's no assassins. Um, this kill actually has a super high cap because you can hit Leeson too, you can hit Yone too, right? And it's like really strong. But it's uh, like, like, did you see how rich I was this game? And I still don't have a max board. It's just like, 
imagine if I went fast nine. Yeah. Like, there's no way. That's why, like, people kind of underestimate how much gold you really need to max out your board. I think that's a really good point. Oh, hitting a lease in two is nice. But I think, to me, that's, like, the, the biggest takeaway I'm getting from this game is because a lot of times if you have the, the gold, quote-unquote, quote unquote, have the gold to go to nine, you go to nine. Like we saw your chat, your chat was everyone in chat was like, Oh, we go to nine, easy nine, this game. But yeah. it's like we talked about earlier with rolling. You have to think about that same thing with leveling too, which is like, what is this going to functionally get me? Like, who cares if I'm level nine, if I have zero gold to actually find something good and put in, you know, and the rest of my board is weaker. And, you know, like you said, you were trying to roll down and find that kale and you knew you needed a lot of gold to do that, to mitigate the low percentage. Yeah. And the, the, the problem with going nine is, so I think what stage was I rolled down at five one right. So if you're going nine, you're not gonna go nine at stage six one, right? Right. You're gonna go nine sometime in stage five, um, because you're just not gonna have enough gold. You're not gonna have, like if you if you if you wow. agree, yeah. This is super close. I think I was a whole <laughs> life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, what I was saying is like um. What was I saying? I forgot. That fight was crazy. Yeah, um, I know. I was totally distracted by that too. <laughs> you were. I think it was, uh, you were saying something about uh, um, about the it was the, the benefits of going nine versus versus waiting. I think. Yeah, yeah. So when you go, if you decide to go nine, you can't. You're not gonna survive until stage six one to go nine. So if you go nine, you probably have to do it sometime in stage five, five two, five four. Right. That means you only have one turn to pivot, and there's no way you're gonna be able to pivot from like uh like a bad board like your early mid game board into right. a level nine board in one turn. So that's why I think fast nine is also bad. Unless you have super crazy APM, you can do everything in one turn, then it's good. But a lot of times when I go nine, I pivot out into a weaker board and I lose one round on per uh, for for no reason. And then yeah. you know I take like two or three rounds to pivot, which you know that's extra life lost. Very true. So here's the roll down. Uh, final one looks like uh, oh you have you have the chance to get the uh, adept or get the yone too. So. Yeah, looking for Yone 2 Shen 2, my comm is capped. Yeah. Now it's all positioning. Now it's me versus the Zai 3 guy and the other KO player um, with 4 Mystic. He has Zillion 2 and Shen and, and, and Lee Sin 2 with double Shoujin. So it's just a matter of changing sides and really trying to make sure that that Kale is going to take the least heat possible here. But that's a scary Lee Sin on the side too. Just make sure that my Kale doesn't get Sejuani ult. Yeah. I think that's it. That's the only thing I need to. Uh, I'm watching this round closely. That Lee Sin is, is scary. Yeah. Oh, I think the, uh, the Sejuani ended up ulting Ooh. upwards towards the Lee Sin. Yeah. And yeah, this guy loses to me somehow. I don't even know how. <laughs> but he lost to my clone. I think I think Lee Sin kicked people. Lee Sin is Lee Sin is by far the, 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 the strongest champion in the game, in my opinion. I mean, um, any anything that gives you that instant kill the way that he can sometimes is definitely that. But also, like you said, if you if you punt a, a Sejuani to their back line, suddenly her ult is just no longer a factor. So he's not only good at killing things, but he's good at mitigating big, powerful late da late game abilities too. Yeah, and like I don't know why he survives for so long, and his kicks don't just kick people out. It, it CCs like the whole clump, right? Yeah. Um, I think my position was I wanted to put Lee Sin near the near, near the sedge. Makes sense. So yeah, here I think he got he got tricked. So this is why switching sides is good, right? He thought right. I was on right side, but I went left last second. He put his Sejuani hard right, so then um it didn't hit my kale. Mm, and right. I think I ended up winning. Wow, yeah, I mean it certainly does look like you win. That's a lot of damage coming through. That should win it, right? Sixteen HP. Yeah. That'll do it. Wow, nice. All right, that was a that was a sick game. That was really exciting. Uh, let's yeah, let's that was super like yeah, that was really close. Let's jump back to the other screen and break it down. All right, so I'm gonna pause this and we're gonna do exactly that. All right, that was a crazy game though. Holy crap! Okay, so I'm gonna make this bigger. Uh, all right, you ready? Yeah. Cool. All right, three, two, one. Okay, we are back again uh, to recap that last one. That was that was a really interesting game. Um, but I think what did win it for you, of course, was some of that late game stuff that you hit the lease in too, the positioning with that, the Yone moving the Kale the right place. But what we talked about a lot of that last game was the decision to not go fast nine, make sure you could establish a board that you've been trying to establish all along first, and then kind of think of things later. Would you say that's kind of that was kind of the defining thing that let you win that game or it, was it that or was it something else what do you think 
I, yeah, no, I think definitely if I went fast nine that game, I probably would have gone. I wouldn't gone first. I would probably get like maybe second, third, or fourth, depending on how good my transition was. Mm. But like, it's weird. It's it's really weird because the the legendaries legendaries uh, right now, right? Yeah. Who are the good legendaries carry? Like Samira. Samira's good, but you mm. need three slayers and sharpshooter for Samira to be good, right? Right. And you also need like pretty good Samira items. Um, like maybe chosen Swain. Chosen Yone, chosen Set. Yeah, they all use AP items. So like, who use? I had I had double Gwinsu's and Zeke's and Ice Cream Cone. Like, who uses attack speed? That's a legendary. Like, mm-hmm. not really anyone. Um, so technically, like Kale is the is better than any legendary I could get. That's a good point. Yeah, Kale is even like I've gone. There's a lot of games where I've gone fast nine. I've gone full legendary boards and I've lost to Olaf and Asol. And I'm like, Olaf and Asol and Kale should be legendaries. They're stronger than legendaries, so it's kind of weird. Uh, but well, it's it's something yeah. that I talk about a lot. Where you know when I'm streaming, and I'm sure when you're streaming too, people ask about the strength of stuff. How strong is this? How strong is this? And the answer I always have is, well, it's strong. Whenever you talk about something in TFT being strong, you have to always add an if at the end of it, right? Because it's strong if you have the right items, if it's the right lobby to play it. Everything about TFT is is about you know, weighing so many different factors to decide what your strongest board is going to be, right? Because like you just said, that legendary comp, obviously it's very flashy, but you don't, if you don't have the items to support it, it's just going to fail to a comp that has, you know, lower tier quote unquote units, but better items to support that too. So it is always that philosophy of it's strong if in TFT. I think it's mainly because items are a very, very big part of TFT, right? Mm-hmm. And you're never playing the game to itemize legendaries. Yeah. Like obviously I think... Like, I don't think the legendaries are weaker than Kale and Olaf and stuff, but if you had best in slot Swain, best in slot Samira, they'd probably be better and a board built around oh, it, yeah, like your Fyfner and stuff. But it's like, you're never going for a carousel item, like, okay, I'm going to go for this item for Swain or something, this item for Samira. And that's mm-hmm. why I think going fast nine is probably weaker because you're not itemizing for them. You're itemizing for your level four cost units, your four cost units. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think, um, and like, if you saw that game there, I had so much gold, right? And I hit Chosen Kale. I ended up hitting my maximum board at the last roll with Gen 2. Yeah. So, like, it took me that long to max out my board. So, like, to cap out my board. So, you know, it, it is a lot, a lot, a lot of gold to uh, cap out your entire board. That was really one of the most fun games I think I've, I've watched in a while. That was really cool, and it was great to be able to hear it from your perspective as well, too, thinking through all the turns. So thanks for sharing that one. I think that brings us to the end of the show today. Uh, before we go, we'll get some final thoughts from from you i would say out of the we we talked about a lot today as we always do on galaxy brain what if you could pick any one thing from all the points we talked about as far as being good at tft today what's the main thing you want people to remember coming out of this one um i would say like don't don't follow like the specific rules that you see in guides and stuff like mm-hmm. roll at three two roll at four one roll at four five you need to change your perspective into like you are rolling to make your board stronger. If you have pairs, you should roll. Mm-hmm. Think of like the return. Is, is the return worth the gold that you're investing? That's how you should think uh, about when you're playing the game. Not like, okay, it's 3-2 now, I'm going to go 6. Uh, it's 4-1 now, I'm going to go 7 and roll. If it's uh, it's 4-5, I'm going to go 8 and roll. Like mm-hmm. People ask me like, oh, what, should I? when should I roll? When should I roll? When should I level? It's like, you should roll when you have pairs to hit. You should roll if you need to get stronger, if you're losing health. You know, um, yeah you should level if you think that gold invested is worth the strength that you're getting to your board plus the natural shops you're getting stuff like that and don't follow like the exact st- rules from the stage because like people made that up the game didn't make that up you right. know so and it's like you need to, every patch too yeah so. you also need to scout the tempo of the lobby to see like oh how aggressive do i need to play stuff like that so i think that's right. what makes a good tft player Proper investing, and uh, Robin Song is definitely having some diamond hand. It's the end of that uh, last game for yeah. sure. The stocks are rising. Well, I've thrown in enough uh, Wall Street bets memes for this episode, but we're gonna end it here, Robin. Before we close it out, any uh, shout outs you want to make? Um, check out my stream twitch.tv slash Robin Songs. Uh, thank you, Doa, for having me. It's, it's been really, it's been really fun. And um. Yeah, tune in to uh, me playing the qualifiers this weekend. It's the last qualifiers before Worlds. Yeah, and it's huge. top four of this qualifier automatically makes it to regionals, which is really good. 
Yep. Regionals are going to be a ton of fun. Can't wait for that next month as well. But thank you so much, Robin Songs, for coming on. This has been a, an awesome episode of Galaxy Brain. I think uh, I learned a lot. Hopefully everybody else learned a lot too. We'll have to have you on in the future, in uh, future sets. But I think that's going to do it for us. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, catch you on the next one for Galaxy Brain. See you later.